It's Friday night hoops here at the Wind Trust Arena. We have the St. John Red Storm facing off against your DePaul Lady Blue Demons. Jack Field here alongside Eric Fisher. Eric, big game here today. And I think one thing that is interesting is DePaul is coming off a huge loss. They battled back and forth, Fisher. How do you turn around so quickly after one of the, maybe one of the most heartbreaking losses in your season? Well, you just got to have your eyes on the prize. And for DePaul, that's finishing near the top of the Big East and getting to the tournament. You're going to have these really intense emotional games like yeah. the one they had at UConn, which it's probably the toughest loss they faced this so far this season. But it's about staying focused to the rest of your schedule. People who, like St. John's, maybe are at the bottom of the Big East. These games are so important. Nothing is giving in this conference. Yep. And I think tonight they have to reestablish their prominence in this conference and take out an opponent that, on paper, they're better than. And Fisher, I think what has really been the nucleus of the Paul's offense so far, not the senior Sonia Morris and Lexi Held, it's the freshman out of Simeon High School, a Chicago resident, and Anisha Morrow, yeah. who is trying to have her four straight 30-point, 10-rebound game here today. Well, you know, she's a threat every time she touches the ball, and you can just see the talent pop off the floor every time. You know, she's such a presence down low for this DePaul team. And, you know, with a talent like that, you really can control a game. And she's done that this whole season, just with rebounding, with scoring inside, being so efficient, so talented. She's really the centerpiece of this team, being so young as well. Yeah, and on the other side, St. John's, they come in at 6-12, and 12, but they do rank second in the Big East in offense. What do we got to see from them tonight to pull off? It would be a huge upset. Well, they got to make their shots. I mean, that, it sounds simple, but, you know, they got to shoot well from the three-point line. They're a good three-point shooting team. They're a good scoring team. They need those shots to fall tonight. You know, they don't have the defensive intensity or pressure to really stop DePaul, so they might have to turn this into a shootout tonight if they want to have a chance. Yeah, we expect a lot of offense in tonight's game. These two teams actually faced off earlier this year, December 19th, in New York as DePaul was able to defeat these St. John Red Storms 107-93, the second most points they scored all year long. And as they're introing the starting lineup, so will we. So we're going to start off with the Red Storm. It's going to be unique Drake. Correa, Bailey, Patterson, and Peoples, and that's going to round out the five. And for your DePaul Blue Demons, it's going to be the five that have really been riding it out for Doug Bruno this year. Days of Church, Lexi Held, Sonia Morris, Darion Rogers, and who was voted number one by ESPN, freshman in the uh, freshman this year in college basketball, uh, Nisha Morrow. She joined actually pretty elite class in UConn's loss. She is the fourth player in the last 20 seasons to get at least 30 points and 10 rebounds against UConn. The other three were all WNBA number one picks. The first one is Chicago's own Candace Parker, uh, Louisville's Angel McCarthy in 2008, and the latest one in uh, 2018, Nerd Ames' Jackie Young. She also leads, or is tied in the lead to Division I with 15 double-doubles, and she has the largest double-double streak at 13. This is a freshman. I mean, this is, a, this is not a fifth year. This is not a senior. <laughs> this is a freshman we're talking about here. And the one thing we kind of mentioned is it's not like she's 6'6". Six, six. She's only 6'1", but she has such a well-known presence, and the fundamentals are just so elite for just a freshman. And that's where the skill comes in. Yeah. She's so skilled and so talented that she can make up for that height differential that she may have with some of her opponents. And it's just really unbelievable, all those stats you listed off. At such a young age, you know, she's really a special talent. Yeah. And she's on a great team, too. I mean, yeah. the rest of these DePaul players play off of her, and they can score as well. So yeah. really, they're going to look for a team effort tonight. But she is going to be the one I'm looking for as an X Factor. So Jack Field, Fisher Keller, we got Olivia in the studio. Let's get underway. Friday night hoops. I hope you all are staying warm. A little bit of snow overnight. Uh, kind of getting tired of it, I'm not going <laughs> to <laughs> These ladies are trying to get, both teams, I should say, are trying to get back on track, especially DePaul after a heartbreaking loss against UConn on Wednesday where they fell 82-78. So it will be Morrow and Peoples on the jump. And just like that, DePaul will win that jump. Held on the wing, and here we go. Anisha Morrow inside. She crosses over, puts it up, and that one rolls out. Amoro misses her first basket. Correa, the leading scorer for the Red Storm, brings the ball up. She hands it off to her counterpart, number 30. 
that is uh, Bailey who misses that shot. Yeah, and a tough shot right there for Anissa Moore to start out, but I like it. You yep. want to be aggressive yeah. to start out, get a rhythm going. So here's Sonia Morris, the mid-range two, up and in. You were saying it, Fisher, earlier when Sonia Morris is on. She's uh, on. She's on, and right there she starts her day off with a mid-range two, and the Blue Demons start today's scoring off. She's really going to need to get that jumper going yeah. if they want to build on this lead. And just like that, Patterson goes inside off the glass for two. And just like that, Morris off the glass in for two. We said this in the pregame. We have a feeling there can be a lot of offense by both teams. And just like that, four points were scored in probably, what, 10 seconds? Yeah, something <laughs> like that. And inside, <laughs> number one, Drake goes in for two. So both teams pushing the tempo up the court. Both teams finding shots inside as it's four to four. Morris goes to Rogers. Rogers pump takes it. Mid-range two is up and in. Darion Rogers coming off one of her most impressive performances in Wednesday's loss. Gets her first basket in. A beautiful move by Rogers yeah. right there. Pump fake. Go underneath. Little mm -hmm. dribble pull up. Sweet looking shot right there. Bailey with the ball for this Red Storm. Hands it off to Drake. Drake up top, 15 on the shot clock. Goes to her left, goes back out. Patterson drives in, she's blocked, they're stolen by Morris. Church drives in, goes to Morris inside, 4-2 and in. Sonia Morris hits her third basket and her sixth points so far this first period. And DePaul on the defensive end, we know this game's gonna be high scoring, but mm -hmm. they can get points off of turnovers. Yep. And you saw it right there. Once they are able to win the turnover battle, usually leads to points as well. Lexi Held, step back three. Step back and kiss myself, Lexi <laughs> Held. And DePaul with 11 early points. They're on a 7-0 run. They've made five of their last five. We're going to go to a quick break and be right back. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human. And she's got this little toy she's always playing with all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese. And guess what? Egg rolls showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. Dad, this is fun. I didn't think I liked kayaking. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, but I think it's time to head back in. Okay. Can we come back? Sure. Hey, be careful getting out of the boat. It's a kayak, Dad. <laughs> I'm going to return the kayak. Can we walk home? How about a taxi? It's a short fare from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. You're listening to Division I Big East coverage, live on Radio DePaul Sports, the student voice of your DePaul Blue Demons. Jack Theo here alongside Fisher Kelly. And uh, we said it in the pregame, man, DePaul's offense has been on fire to St. John as as well. 15 points already, but it's been DePaul with the 11 so far, and it's been a nice showing of the two Seniors, Lexi Held with three and Sonia Morris three or three from the field. Yep, and for St. John's, if they really want to stay in this game, they got to be aggressive. And you saw that with Unique Drake, you know, yep. going to the basket on the first play and getting that layup. You know, we can't expect open layups at all game, but as soon as you drive in, that should open up the things for St. John's three-point shooters, which is where they excel is at the three-point line. So if they want to keep in this game and keep scoring like DePaul surely will, yeah. it looks like, uh, they need to do that. Yeah, it, I don't know if it's going to come down who makes the most stops. I just think it's going to it's going to come down to who scores the most at this point. I mean, both teams are just so electric on the offensive side. They can show flash of the defense, but both of these teams, the win, the ways they win are because of their offensive skill sets, not because of defense. And DePaul is one of the hardest teams to st uh, stay up with in terms of scoring, especially in the Big East. If I am correct, according to the our game notes, I believe they have about six games where they have scored 100 points in Big East play, six Big East games. So the only ones where they haven't scored over 100 in Big East play were Marquette, which was a loss, Villanova, which we talked about was a very good defensive team, Xavier, which was their latest win, 
in the loss last or this past Wednesday against Connecticut. So they're a team that can easily put up 100. As there's a mid-range two from number two, Correa, the leading scorer for these Red Storm. It's going to have to go through her, and she's going to really have to get the offensive going. Yeah, absolutely. So Rogers goes inside to Morrow. Morrow, spin move, off the glass, and she's fouled from behind. That was Gines with the contact. So Morrow will be going to the line four, two, free throw. Um, Gines not really happy with that call, but nevertheless, Morrow, who really had some clutch free throws, even though they didn't get the outcome they wanted to, get some clutch free throws in the late stretch. We'll have a chance here to score her first points of the game. First one's up, and it's off. Morrow cannot convert her first free throw. Morrow's second free throw is out. So this freshman goes 0 for 2 from the line. Correa pushes up, kicks it out inside, all the way across again, 4-3. That one's off. Morrow with the rebound. Morrow pushes the ball up. Goes to Sonia Morris. Morris goes up top to Held. Held inside to Morrow. Morrow, spin move. Up and off. Morrow cannot convert that jumper as Gines pushes it up. It looks like that is Clegg bringing the ball up. You love to see it if you're an yeah. Morrow. Like the shot's not going in, but those are good shots. So like cool. yep. just gotta be patient. Keep being aggressive. You're going to make your free throws, yeah. but just keep attacking. So Morrow pushes out the held. Held shot, no good. Morrow with the offensive rebound. Misses it. Another rebound up and in, and that's what uh, Nisha Morrow does. Like you just said, stick with it, and it will come. She gets her first points, and she already has four rebounds on the game. So the Blue Demons lead 13-6, to six, shooting 6-10 six from the field. Correa with the ball up top, held on her. Correa, step back, makes held jump off the glass, no good. And St. John's almost with the offensive rebound, but it appears, I believe that was Gines. Yeah, Gines who stepped out of bounds. And it would be Blue Demon basketball with 6-10 and counting in the first. Church inside to Morrow, hands it off to Church. Church tries to go underhand, nowhere to go. Morrow just right there off the glass and good. Uh, Anisha Morrow scores another basket, and now she has four on the day so far. She's pretty close to a double-double. Already. Already. <laughs> Already. <laughs> and she's missed three shots and two free throws. <laughs> so Bailey with the ball. Nowhere really to go. She'll go to Clegg. Clegg trying to find somewhere to go. Goes off a screen. Hands that one off to Gines. Gines thinks about it. Goes to Clegg. Clegg for three. Clegg nails the three. The first three-pointer for the Red Storm. We're going to have to see plenty of those from St. John's if they want to win this game as there is a overbad pass by Lexi Held out of the reach of Anisha Morrow. Looking like Andy Dalton out there. <laughs> and it will be St. John's basketball as we'll have our first substitution of the game. Kyria Collier will come in for Sonia Morris. And for the Red Storm, it's going to be Cosgrove that comes in for um, Pebbles. And if you're DePaul, you know you can score. You know you can push the ball. Mm -hmm. You know you have the offensive firepower to beat this team. Yep. But it's really going to come down to being smart yep. and not turning the ball over, playing good defense, rotating, communicating, those little things that maybe mm -hmm. you take for granted sometimes. Those are things that win you basketball games. And this is one of those games. Yeah. Those are going to be more important than ever. Yeah, as Correa turns that one over to St. John's coach Joe Tartamella in his 37th season. Um, he wants a call, and he didn't get one. Our stat sheet says it's his 37th season, but he looks he looks like he's 37. He's a young looking he looks guy, like he's so. 37. <laughs> There's a three from Correa. That one's off the back iron, and Rogers rebounds it. Yeah, I think they got maybe mixed up with the last game. I was gonna say he looks like he's 37. I don't think it's his 37th year. Morrow's mid range is off. Correa with the rebound. Yeah. Correa will push the ball up. Anisha Morrow on her, and she falls. There is a foul. Uh, the question is, who's that one on? Maybe on Held, I think. It's going to be on Morrow. Morrow. Hers, her first. It seemed like the contact was a little bit after when more. I don't know. It was a little questionable. <laughs> Nevertheless, that's a foul. We have a substitution on the Red Storm side. So Drake will come in for Giant. Guys, I wonder if 
people are going to be listening to tonight's broadcast and hear me say Drake. And are they are they going to think we're talking about the Drake? I don't think so, but I'm just – there can be a little misconception there. Which Drake are we talking about? Anisha Mora with the steal. She has a one-way ticket to the basket, and she scores. And with that Euro step, she takes her boarding pass and books her flight. Well, speaking of Drake, Nice Mora already <laughs> making headlines in this game. <laughs> oh, wow. There we go, Fisher. I love that segue, man. There you go. <laughs> well, she definitely has that hot line bling in today's game so far <laughs> with six points and five rebounds in the first period as Correa 3 is up. That's off the back iron. Morrow tries to steal a rebound from Morris, but Morris able to bring that one down. Morrow put, Morris pushes it up, crosses over, goes to the corner. Collier for three. That one's off the back iron. That's going to be rebounded by Bailey. Bailey kind of slows the tempo up. Hands it off to Clegg. Clegg for three. Clegg's off. Cosgrove for the offensive rebound. Makes her way, loses the ball, gets it back, goes back to Clegg up top. 15 left on the shot clock. Cosgrove looks for a lot of size out there for St. John's as you can see if it's not Anisha Morrow on her, there's a pretty big size disadvantage. Yeah, big size disadvantage. Make sure you got to box out if you're DePaul. Be Cosgrove DePaul. has to throw it up due to the shot clock. Church with the rebound. Church pushes up crossover. Takes it back outside. Goes to Held on the wing. Held kicks it out to Morris. Morris up top. Drives inside. Behind the back. Almost loses it. Goes to Church. Church, mid-range. That one's off. Clegg gets the rebound. Both teams going a little cold here yeah. for, for a stretch. Two, uh, St. John's has scored in the last 217, and they're one of their last seven. One of their last eight, actually. And that's going to be out of bounds on the paw. We're going to see Kendall Holmes for the first time, the 5'11 guard out of Plainfield, Illinois. And Anisha Morrow will get her first rest of the night while Gines will be coming in for Bailey, number 30. So, like you said, both teams in a little bit of a job. More specifically, the Red Storm, one of eight from the field, and their scoring draw is now at 228. So, Not a promising start for the no. Red Storm. No High-scoring team like DePaul, you need those yeah. points. There, you can't have a drought against DePaul. No. And there's a stolen right there by Holmes, pushes out the Lexi Held, held on the wing, drives inside, floater up. Floater good for the senior. And DePaul now leads by double digits, 19 to nine. And St. John's offense has gone cold like the weather here in Chicago. So Clegg now with the ball. Clegg, one of three from the field, drives inside, underhand, and that one rolls in for two. Kamari Clegg, the grad student out of Westland, Michigan, a transfer student out of Clemson. So Morris on the wing. Morris crosses over. Morris spin move up and good. A little spinorama from the all um, Big East honor, Sonia Morris. Cosgrove inside for the Red Storm. Cuts it to the corner. That's a three, and that's good by Drake. No Marvin's room playing tonight as she swishes <laughs> down that one. Held behind the back. Goes to the corner. Holmes for three. That one's off. Gines with the rebound, gives it to Clegg. St. John's two and nine from the three point line as Gines goes inside of Cosgrove. Nice pass and a swat by Deja Church. Oh my goodness, someone's gonna have to go to the confession room after that one. A little turkey with that stuff. Huh? Deja Church sent that one down with one hand. And for a guard to block uh, a oh my center goodness. like that, that's just very impressive. So Correa with the ball. She shoots the three. That's way off. And an offensive rebound. It looks like that's number 20, Raven Pepples. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Clegg goes to her left. Goes inside. Morrow tips it. That's off of the Paul player. And it will be seven seconds left on the shot clock. Anisha Morrow does check back in. Uh, and Darion Rogers as well. Held and Church are out. Inside, Correa for two. Off the glass and good. A nice shot by the junior. So Holmes goes up top to Rogers. Morris pulls up for three. That one's off the back iron. Clegg with the rebound. Paul really needs to lock up defensively here. St. John's has made their last two buckets, and even though they've outplayed them, still have a chance to 
give up some points and make it a closer lead as we have a foul on the floor here. Yeah, and it seems like Correa has really stepped up in these last two minutes. She draws a blocking foul. Uh, it appears she will be shooting two free throws. Yeah, they were down by 10 a couple minutes ago. Down by five, Correa has two free throws coming up here. So, you know, they've done a good job, I think, as well as rebounding. They are out-rebounding DePaul right now, 12 to 10. And, you know, they're not shooting that much better at DePaul. They're not shooting better at all than DePaul, I should say. So uh, this is going to be some discussion on the floor. I think uh, it's going to be on the floor. Yeah, on not the floor. a shooting foul. Going to be on the floor. So it's going to be a baseline pass. So we found out Joe Tartamella. This is his tenth year. It at seems Saint right. John's. Yeah, it's his tenth <laughs> year. Morrow with the steal. Drives in off the glass off, and a steal right there by Holmes. Drake could not handle it. Collier in the corner. Nothing but nylon for the junior, and DePaul now leads by eight. An offensive rebounding for DePaul. Yep. They are an amazing offensive rebounding team, first in the Big East, 10th in the country. They got one right there. They pay it off with an open three-point yeah. shot. Clegg drives in and draws the foul with 40.9 seconds left. Bailey heading towards the scorer's table. She will check in for Gines. Clegg's first free throw is no good. So both teams, three free throws, no makes. I guess no one wants free points. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. They want to make earn it the hard way, these oh. teams. Big East basketball. And Clegg makes the second one. So St. John's one to two from the line in today's game. Those are their first free throws of the game. They trail by seven. Collier goes to Morrow by the free throw line. Morrow drives in off the glass. That one's off. A rebound right there by Peppels. Peppels goes to Bailey. St. John's can most likely and ideally hold for the last shot here down by seven. Or they were largest deficit was 10. That was 21 to 11. It's been a 6-3 run for them so far. Bailey with the ball up top. Holmes on her. Seven seconds left. Six, five. Bailey inside, off the glass, and good over the extended hand of Morrow, and that's gonna be it. The Blue Demons lead 24 to 19. We'll be right back, and be sure to stay tuned as we'll have tonight's trivia question ready for you. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Started off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in, say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Dad, this is fun. I didn't think I liked kayaking. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, but I think it's time to head back in. Okay. Can we come back? Sure. Hey, be careful getting out of the boat. It's a kayak, Dad. <laughs> I'm going to return the kayak. Can we walk home? How about a taxi? It's a short fare from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I was sensitive to lights and sounds, so I built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. Sometimes, I do the same things over and over, until one day, I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. 
a champion. Real life checks mechanism. Yah, 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 yah. I should kill him for rat. It's not your normal PSA. Don't be stupid. Don't drink and drive. If you're gonna go out and have a good time, it's fine. But designate a driver to drive home. Let's stop the madness. Don't drink and drive. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. You're listening to Division I Big East coverage, live on Radio DePaul Sports, the student voice of your DePaul Blue Demons. Jack Thiel here alongside Fisher Kelly. Blue Demons lead 24-19, but the St. John Red Storm, they've made this somewhat a game. They were down by 10 early in the first period, down by five, and they start the second period with the basketball. And they did just enough to keep this game close. I think for St. John's, didn't play the greatest first quarter yeah. as, again, Correa with a bucket. She's yeah. been she's fantastic really, for she's so far. Seems like if the, uh, St. John's going to want to win, it's going to be through Correa. As Rodgers is up top, Morris on the wing, tries to look for Morrow's way, but good coverage by Pipples. Morris kicks it out to Rodgers. Rodgers thought about it again. A couple crossover moves, no good as Patterson with lockdown defense. Morris goes up top to Held. Held a deep three. And she hits it all the way from Sox on 35th, you could say. Lexi held with the Ben Gordon style three. Showing the range there with that one. Oh Step my Curry goodness. land with that shot. She said, I'm going to shoot this one on Sox on 35th. I want to <laughs> take the red line tonight. Blue Demons lead 27 21. Drake with the ball. Drake goes in the corner. Patterson spin move off the glass. That's off, but there's going to be a foul. Looks like that's on Rodgers. So it is time for Radio DePaul Sports Trivia. We played We played on Wednesday. Uh, the question was, how many times did DePaul lose in a row to UConn? It's 19. Um, short story story, Olivia, our engineer and awesome live game coordinator, got it wrong, of course. But um, <laughs> <laughs> as Patterson misses the first free throw, we're going to do it again here today. Fisher can participate. Of course, Olivia in our studio can participate. You're going to tweet the answer at RDP Sports or use it as the hashtag as Patterson makes his second free throw, 27-22. Doug Bruno has made the NCAA tournament 24 times as Lexi Held hits the mid-range shot, 29-22. So Doug Bruno has made the NCAA tournament 24 times. How many times has he made it past the Sweet 16? As that's going to be a turnover on St. John's, DePaul basketball. So once again, the question is, Doug Bruno has been in the NCAA tournament 24 times. How many times? Has he reached past, past the Sweet 16? Once again, you can tweet at you can tweet at our radio station at RDP Sports or use that a hashtag. We'll reveal the answer in the third quarter. <laughs> so uh, your final answers will be due by halftime. As Morrow has the ball at the free throw, Morrow's mid range is up. Morrow's mid range is off. Correa with the rebound. Correa brings the ball up. 29-22. Correa and goes to the corner, shot fake. In the corner is Correa, Correa for three. That one's off. Morrow with the rebound. Goes to Lexi Held, Lexi Held brings the ball up. Held a nice pass right there to Collier. Outside the Rogers, 4-3 on the wing. That one is good. Beautiful ball movement by the Blue Demons. Leads to a three that extends the lead to double digits. Scores all over the floor for DePaul. They're getting it from every single player. Lexi Held hits a three, and then Rogers just hits a three. You got Morrow and Morris out there with Church. They're just stacked offensively. So Correa up top goes to Clegg on the wing. Clegg uses the screen. Six seconds left in the shot clock. Oh, step back. Almost got Collier slipping. Patterson drives in. The floater is up and good. A good play by the grad student out of Brooklyn, New York, as Church drives in. Off the glass and good. That's Church's first basket of today's game. So Clegg with the ball. She goes to her left. Go, tried to go to Correa, but Correa 
It's cut did not work there. Patterson with the ball up top. Patterson drives in. She goes inside and one from the contact of Rogers is able to put that one off the glass and in for two. Tough shot by Patterson. Way to get to the hole. Being aggressive, finishing strong. Good looking shot for the St. John Red Storm. Yeah. Still, you know, they're still sort of in this game. They're chipping a little bit. Chipping away a little bit. So Fisher, I have to ask you, do you have a final answer for that trivia question yet? I think I do. What is it? I think I'm gonna go with one time. One time. All right, we'll, we'll, re re we'll, say we'll reveal that answer. Um, and uh, we'll reveal the answer right after halftime. We'll repeat the question um, at the end of the second quarter, but we'll reveal the answer after halftime as Correa just throws that one off. Was trying to absorb the foul, but misses. Coach Tartamello is arguing his case as well. Morris drives inside, spin move, but she, her feet slipped right there, almost like on the Maggie Daly um, skating rink right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then it had her skates on right there. So our engineer Olivia says four. Is she right? I don't know. We'll find out after halftime. I know the answer. <laughs> so Bailey on the wing. Step back, goes inside to her right side, kicks it out to Clegg for three. Clegg for three. That one's good and one. A chance for a four point play for the grad student out of Westland, Michigan. That's something you don't really see that much. Four point play, you do not see that much. And for St. John's, just an easy, easy design right there where you had Bailey just taking it to the hole, yeah. draw the defense, kick out to the open person in the corner, they get an open shot. And undisciplined foul right there to foul on a three-point shot. Yeah, that was on for four-point play. Yeah, that was on Collier. Her second. Clegg leads the team in points with nine and threes with two so far. And she hits the three throw and completes the four-point play. And now it was just a ten-point game, and now it's back to a four-point game. That's what the three-point shot does. It's just an extra point, and you can inch back into these games yeah. much quicker. Inside the Morrow off the glass, and good. Beautiful. Anisha Moore with her eighth point of the game so far. 8.7 rebounds for the freshman. Uh, it's just something that St. John's cannot stop, that pick and roll. But in general, just the DePaul offense. So it's just smooth sailing right now for them as Patterson's three is up. And good. Danielle Patterson with a nice stroke. And it's a three-point game. Rock Church for three. Off. And that one's off the hands of Morrow. St. John's has made four of their last five. Their last two shots have been freed, and they have gone in, including that four-point play by Clegg. They're 4 of 13 from the three-point line. So Clegg brings the ball up. A three here ties the game. It'd be the first tie since it was 4 to 4. That's Bailey. Does some dribble moves on Morris. Morris with stout defense. Clegg almost loses it, gets it back. Clegg throws it up. That's no good. Pepples with the offensive rebound, but Church just rips it right out of her hand. Weight room, she says. Morris drives in. That one's up and good. The, one, the floater in for two. And DePaul needs some stops here. St. John's has found a little bit of a rhythm yep. offensively. They need to stifle that if they want to build on this lead because they keep cutting into it and inching back into this game. Correa goes inside to Patterson. Patterson with the um, fake to the Paul, or not Paul, St. John's coach is a little upset. I think there was a wide open player in the corner, but a nice cut inside and pass by Clegg to Pepples for two. And I mean, this is what you're talking about. The uh, Paul is just having trouble getting those stops. And when they do get those stops, it seems like they have empty possessions on the offensive side. Morris goes to Morrow. Morrow spin move up and off short. Pepples with the rebound goes to Clegg. St. John's with another chance here to tie the game with a three. Clegg hands it off to Patterson. Mismatch right here. Patterson inside to Pepples. Inside for two. Off the glass and good. It's a one-point game. And Doug Bruno is not happy. 38, 37 to go to a quick 30-second timeout. Welcome back to The Dog Show. Up next, we have Satchmo. Satchmo is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their couch snuggling, ball chasing, face licking, and of course, companionship. Now, let's see him in action. Look how he makes eye contact with his person. That's actually known as the treat stare. 
How intuitive. And now he appears to be excitedly turning in circles. Ah, the happy dance will come in with this group. But really, the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Satchmo is to meet one. Visit theshelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Whoa, long time no see. It's me, the rock t-shirt in the back of your closet. Dude, remember? You crowd surfed in me, man. But you haven't worn me in like forever. I get it, you're retired, but I still got some rock left in me. So take me to Goodwill, where I can really make a difference. Your donations to Goodwill create jobs, training programs, and education assistance for people in your community. To find your nearest donation center, go to goodwill.org. Donate stuff. Create jobs. A message from Goodwill and the Ad Council. Dad, this is fun. I didn't think I'd like kayaking. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. But I think it's time to head back in. Okay. Can we come back? Sure. Hey, be careful getting out of the boat. It's a kayak, Dad. <laughs> I'm gonna return the kayak. Can we walk home? How about a taxi? It's a short fare from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. Listen, as a hiring manager, I've got to tell you, the best job candidate isn't always the typical candidate. Sometimes they're a grad of life. Meet the grads of life, young adults of unique determination and experience, an ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Sometimes the best candidates aren't the ones you're used to. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. You're listening to Division I Big East coverage, live on Radio DePaul Sports, the student voice of your DePaul Blue Demons. Jack Theo here alongside Fisher Kelly, and Fisher was seen to be all DePaul in the first period. Even though St. John's has been down 10 multiple times this period, they sit down by one, and they've obviously made Doug Bruno upset because he's a little anxious on that sideline because St. John's offense is clicking on all cylinders right now, making four of their last five. Well, we know for DePaul that offensively, they can pretty much get to the places they want to get. They can win this game by offense alone, but Doug Bruno doesn't want that, and I don't think that's a very smart way to play. You yeah. need to lock up on defense a little bit here because St. John's, now they're starting to get into this game. They're starting to make shots. They think they can play. So now it can really be interesting after this run to see how this DePaul team responds, see if they have that grit that is required yeah. to get far in the tournament. Let's see if they can lock up on defense this and is, stop yeah. this run. It's also a big game. It's televised nationally on Fox Sports 1. It's Absolutely. also alumni night here. And it's going to be alumni night for the men's tomorrow against UConn as Morrow misses jumper own oh, rebound and misses the second jumper. So you got alumni from the women's team here tonight. You got Fox Sports 1 here. So this is the way to showcase her talents. As that three is good by Bailey. And the St. John Red Storms have taken the lead, 40-38. to 38. And uh, <laughs> Doug Bruno cannot be too happy right now as Days of Church goes to the baseline. Goes up. That's off. Morrow with an offensive rebound up and in 4-2. Uh, Nisha Morrow, when she gets that ball in the paint, she does what she wants and when she wants. Hard Ten points, stop. nine rebounds. Hard to stop. And that's offensive rebounding for DePaul. That is a huge, huge part of this game that I think they need to get better at if they want to extend this lead. As Correa's three is blocked by Morris, Held brings the ball up. Held crosses over to mid-range two. Is good. Smooth like butter from the senior. Just a great shot right there. Tough falling to your to the opposite side, shooting yeah. across your body, through the paint. Sweet looking shot right there. Let's see if Paul can get a stop. Yep, and as Bailey is blocked from behind on Morris, and we can see kind of in our rear direction, or I should say forward direction, the alumni for the women's basketball team is getting ready as they're gonna be right. um, honored at halftime. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so we have a clear view. You can see they're trying to, or like, kind of like a senior day thing it looks like. Probably just all go on the court, announce their names. I, b I believe Allie Quickly should be here. I believe. I could be wrong, but she is one of the greatest DePaul players ever, and she is a recent WNBA champion as St. John turns the ball over. 
and I'm sh and she obviously Doug Bruno was her coach, so I'm sure she's got to be here. I mean, I'm not. They, I haven't seen the list yet. We'll we can obviously let you know after halftime, along with a trivia question and answer. So, but 2:38 left. Nice Collier play. with the cut inside, 4-2, and DePaul now leads by four. Like you said, Fisher, that's just a beautiful cut right there. No one paying attention. Great play, great off-ball screen and off-ball motion for the easy pass and layup. Yeah, that's Patterson blocked right there, kind of a combination block. I think that's the one thing. When no one's in that paint as a player, I feel like you. it's like you must cut inside because there's just no exactly. one standing. They're asking for it. Exactly. So Bailey drives inside. That's stolen by Collier. Collier pushes it up the court. Goes to Church, Church, underhand, no good. Rebounded by Gines. Two minutes and counting left here in the second period. Blue Demons lead by four. Clegg with the ball. Morris on her. Clegg slows things down. Friday night hoops here at the Wind Trust Arena. The men's will face off against UConn tomorrow at uh, 5.30. That should be, I believe that's on Fox Sports 1 as well. That should be a good yep. one. Patterson drives in. The underhand too strong. Rebounded by Hell. The Hell pushes it up. Church has room. She drives in. That's blocked by Patterson. And they're going to say a travel. Patterson on the block kind of palmed it. And I guess she took an extra step. It wasn't a block where it hit the ground. She kept it in her hands when she blocked it and just took too many steps. So they're going to call that a travel. And it's going to be DePaul basketball here. Interesting call. I thought that might have been stepping out of yeah. bounds, but. And Morrow, just like that, is fouled down low by Pepples. And Morrow will go to the line, four free throws. 0 for 2 on the day. And just noted on our stat sheet, Anisha Morrow now leads the Division I and in the country in double doubles and has, once again, the longest active streak. Just incredible. We still have another half to play. <laughs> Morrow's first free throw is good. So she redeems herself after missing those two early free throws with one there. 11 on the day so far. Held leads the scores with 12. It's been a quiet 12 for her. And Morris with 10. That one is good from Morrow as well. The Blue Demon shooting 50% from the field, 40% from the three-point line. So Patterson, or I said Bailey with the ball on the wing, goes to Drake up top. Drake with a cut inside the Clegg. She can't handle it. And that's going to be Blue Demon basketball off the hands of Clegg. Kind of just ran into the shoulders of Morrow. And Morrow <laughs> didn't really react to that. Yeah, and St. John's struggling on offense without Correa as she goes in. Yeah, I was going to say that. Just as we speak. They haven't sh the Red Storm haven't scored in the last 218. And they have also three turnovers in that 218 as well. So Collier up top goes to Held on the wing. She's made a deep three so far. She leads the team in points. Morris on the wing goes across to Collier. Collier, eyebrow fake, but she traveled. And that will be a DePaul turnover. Just their third of the game so far with 111 so far left in this second period. And to end this half off, DePaul really needs to focus on what they can control. Yep. Playing defense, being smart with the ball. Their offense will come. They have that much talent on the offensive end, but they just need to be smart and continue to D up yeah. as the second quarter comes to an end. Correa stolen by Held. Morris has a freeway to the basket, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Morris stuck out a little bit of the chicken wing right there and a little bit of a push off on Bailey. Tried to draw the foul herself, but she's the one that does it, and it's going to be a turnover. And Bailey sold it a little bit as well, but yeah, uh, that's a good call by the when officials. You, it's just hard when you see the offensive player's elbow or arm extend. Got it. It's pretty obvious. Right. Drake's two off foot. No good. Holmes with the rebound. Holmes pushes the ball up. Slows things down with 39 and counting left on the clock. DePaul is on an 8-0 run after trailing 40-38. to St. John's hasn't scored in three minutes, and they have also four turnovers in three minutes. Held goes to Holmes on the wing. Holmes for three. That one's off. Bailey with the rebound, and St. John's can hold for the last shot here. Don't forget about our trivia question. Doug Bruno has made the NCAA tournament 24 times. How many times has he made it past 
the Sweet 16. We'll reveal the answer after halftime. Seven seconds left. Bailey with a spin move. Goes inside, loses it. That's going to be off the foot of Bailey and 2.9 left. Uh, see if a uh, kind of play the DePaul can draw up here. Let's see what they're going to do here. Held inside. She loses it. Up and in. A stole. Patterson steals the ball, puts it off the glass before the buzzer, and DePaul will go into halftime, leading 46 to 42, but a promising way to go into halftime if you're the Red Storm Fish. Yeah, and that was really just worst case scenario for DePaul on that inbound play. St. John's not slacking. They step up, steal the ball, get that big bucket right before the half ends, and they're only down four. Fish and myself are going to take a break. Olivia back in the studio is going to take things over, probably with Love Me Sexy. We're in the third period. Action getting underway. The Blue Demons lead 46-42. Sonia Morris drives in. Goes to Anisha Mora down low. That one's off of, it looks like, Pepples and out of bounds. Jack Fielder alongside Fisher Kelly and Fisher. Yes, the Pauls in the lead, but I think it's a little too close for Doug Bruno's liking here. Absolutely. And it really, DePaul, it's about defense. Mm -hmm. um, as Sonia Moore scores right there, as I was about to say, they can score with the best of them. Yep. And they're on pace to match their season average at half. So the offense really isn't the issue. It's really their defensive intensity yep. and their you know lapses on that end. That's really what's kept St. John's in this game competing. Well, Patterson throws up a three. Patterson misses a three. Pepples with the offensive rebound. Bailey drives in. That's poked from behind by Church. Held brings the ball up. Goes to Morris, who drives down low. Spin move two. That one's good. Sonia Morris nails down her 14th point of the night. And the Blue Demons start the third period on a 4-0 run. This is something we've been seeing all day. St. John's is right in that four, six, you know, three deficit mark, and then it goes back to 10, and then it goes back to that three, four, six mark. As Lexi held with the uh, heads up steal, goes to Rogers inside the church, off the glass, and good. And just like that, it's a 10 point lead for the Blue Demons. Much better start to the half for the Blue Demons. They're causing turnovers, they're rotating on defense, they're getting out and running, which is where they excel. It's looking good so far for Doug Bruno's squad. So Drake for that. hits a <laughs> shot. They're going to count that as a two. It's going to be a very long two. As Morrow drives in underhand and in for the freshman, who now has 14 points and 10 rebounds. Drake quickly brings the ball up. Bailey with it. Drives inside. Blocked from behind off the shin of Morrow, and it will be St. John Red Storm basketball. You think Doug... Bruno may have thrown a marker or two in the um, locker room <laughs> during halftime. Maybe yeah. not a chair. This isn't Bob Knight, but maybe something was thrown in the locker room. He was obviously not happy yeah. in that second period as Correa hits the mid-range too. Whatever yeah. gets the team going. <laughs> Whatever gets the team going. And if you're as <laughs> prolific as Doug Bruno is, you yeah. know. Doug you, Bruno, you, he's you a, have he's your a, ways. He's a stern man as Morrow travels right there. It's hard for him to crack a smile. No, yeah, it's very hard. It's very rare you see him smile on the sidelines, but you know. You only see him smile when he wins. So sure. I don't. I, I wonder what it's like after games when he loses. He has to have like a deep breath and is he okay? Because I have never seen a coach so stern like him before in a while. As Correa loses the basketball, able to retrain it. Da uh, Drake, I should say, goes to the wing of Bailey. Bailey, nowhere to go. Se eight seconds left on the shot clock. That's a foul by. Rogers. So we had a trivia question, and now it's time to answer that trivia question. So the trivia question of the day was Doug Bruno has made the NCAA tournament 24 times as a women's college basketball coach. How many times has he made it past the Sweet 16? What is your final answer again? One, you said? I said one. Olivia, what is your final answer? You both are incorrect. Darn it. As Correa's mid-range two is up and off. Morrow with the rebound, pushes it to Held. Correa steals it. Correa goes inside. Spin move by Patterson. She loses it, gets it back. Bailey drives and said, Euro step and in. St. John's now on a 4-0 run. The answer is zero. Doug Bruno has never made it past the Sweet 16 in his women's collegiate basketball coaching history. I was close. You were close. Olivia was not. 
<laughs> so Olivia now is 0 for 2 on trivia as Hell drives in and Hell misses the lay-in. Patterson with the rebound, or I said Bailey with the rebound, goes to Patterson inside, off the glass, and good. Doug Bruno emphatically calls a timeout, and we are going to go, going to, go to a quick break. Now the St. John Red Storm on their 6-0 run. Whoa, long time no see. It's me, the rock t-shirt in the back of your closet. Dude, remember? You crowd surfed in me, man. But you haven't worn me in like forever. I get it, you're retired, but I still got some rock left in me. So take me to Goodwill, where I can really make a difference. Your donations to Goodwill create jobs, training programs, and education assistance for people in your community. To find your nearest donation center, go to goodwill.org. Donate stuff. Create jobs. A message from Goodwill and the Ad Council. Welcome back to The Dog Show. Up next, we have Satchmo. Satchmo is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their couch snuggling, ball chasing, face licking, and of course, companionship. Now, let's see him in action. Look how he makes eye contact with his person. That's actually known as the treat stare. How intuitive, and now he appears to be excitedly turning in circles. Ah, the happy dance will come in with this group. But really, the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Satchmo is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. I'm a champion, real life checks mechanism. Yah, 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 yah. Hi, right, Shaquille O'Neal for Rad. He's not your normal PSA. Don't be stupid. Don't drink and drive. If you're going to go out and have a good time, it's fine. But designate a driver to drive home. Let's stop the madness. Don't drink and drive. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, Rad, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. I don't recycle. I mean, we can just find another planet for your kids to live on, you know? Noted non-recycler Tommy Crenshaw talks about the future. Oh, I can totally see finding another planet that can support life when ours fills up with trash. Log on to yougottobekidding.org and learn about all the ways you can recycle, unless you're into lame excuses like Tommy's. Hey, recycling's just not my thing. Starting over on a new planet? Now that's exciting. Don't be that guy, unless you want people looking at you funny. Log on to yougottobekidding.org. I'm a champion, real life checks mechanism. Hi, Shaquille O'Neal for Rad. He's not your normal PSA. Don't be stupid. Don't drink and drive. If you're going to go out and have a good time, it's fine. But designate a driver to drive home. Let's stop the madness. Don't drink and drive. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, Rad, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. You're listening to Division I Big East coverage, live on Radio DePaul Sports, the student voice of your DePaul Blue Demons. It might be chilly on the Windy City, but it's been hot shooting by both teams here today, Fish. 54-50 in the middle of the third period, both teams shooting about 50% from the field and 30% from the three-point line. St. John's, they are down 10. Here they are on a 6-0 run, have made four of their last five, and now down by four. And give credit to St. John's. They're answering for every answer DePaul has. It's just been back and forth type of game so far. And whenever DePaul seems like they're going to pull away, they're coming back. So St. John's is making their shots. DePaul just needs to tighten up on defense. Paul here with the ball. Morris with crossovers. Mid-range two is up and out. Patterson with the rebound. Goes to Bailey. Bailey pushes it up. All five starters in for the Red Storm. Oh, Lexi Held almost was able to pick that pocket behind the back. Patterson goes off the hands of Held. It will still be St. John's basketball, but Held almost took that one out of the cookie jar. Whew. Close, close missed chance right there for DePaul. Seemed like they got their hands on that ball. Everything but the steal. Patterson up top, crosses over, spin move, loses the basketball. Peppel is able to retrieve it, goes in off the glass for two, and it's a two-point game. She wanted a foul on Morrow, but nevertheless able to score through the contact. And St. John's is winning those 50-50 balls. Not a good sign for DePaul's hustle and toughness as Deja Church misses the layup. Yep. Turns it back over to St. John's, but a travel. And Yeah, Peppel's right there. 
Travels about 90 feet away from the basket. That's the one if you're, you know, Joe Tartamella, you kind of lose your hair on that one. So yeah. far away from the basket, you travel. So the Paul on the 225 scoring drought. St. John's on an 8 0 run. Church, or I should say Collier passing the ball out. Morrow drives in, goes outside the church, up top the Held. Held goes to her right, inside, that's stolen. Pepples with the steal. Drake brings the ball up. St. John's can tie or take the lead. Drake goes back up top. Drake looks the offense set. Goes inside, off the glass, in for two, and the Red Storm have tied the game at 54, a 10 and 0 run. Church now with it up top. Inside cutting is Morris. Loses it, able to get the ball back. Morris looking for someone to go inside to Morrow. Off the glass and in for two. And that's some just great chemistry right there by Morris and Morrow putting the ball where Morrow can only get it. Yeah, and Paul needs to get to get the ball to Anise and Morrow. That is their bread and butter, and they can reestablish that paint. They're losing the rebounding yeah. battle so far in the second half. They need to establish that paint presence with their bigs. So Morris pushes it to Church for three. She hits the three. That's Church's first three of the game and her seventh point. And the Blue Demons now lead by five. A big shot right there by the um, grad senior. So Correa on the wing. Collier on her. Correa spin moves, drives inside, off the glass, and in. Oh, what a beautiful underhand shot by number two. Correo has her 10th point of the game. Morris with the ball up top, goes to her left, and she is swatted away by Bailey. With authority on that one. Drake drives in, goes inside, Euro step in for two. Taking that one all the way to the basket, and it's back to a one point game. St. John's showing a lot of toughness in the second half. Morris for three. That one's off. Morrow with the offensive rebound. Spin move off the glass, fouled by Pepples. Morrow will go to the line for two free throws. She has 16 points and 12 rebounds, and we have ourselves a timeout. 59-58, don't go anywhere. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I was sensitive to lights and sounds, so I built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. Sometimes I do the same things over and over until one day I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. One in three adults in America have prediabetes, but most don't know it. To let people know it can be reversed before it becomes type 2 diabetes, professional basketball player Julius Randle is doing everything in reverse. I'm only dunking with reverse windmills. I drove the whole way to practice in reverse. I don't recommend it. This move's called the reverse shuffle. I do recommend it. And it took me months to learn how to speak in reverse, like this. <clears throat> Here's 10 almost for diabetes type 2 with living Ben has my mom. In other words, my mom has been living with type 2 diabetes for almost 10 years. So together, we want to say to the 84 million Americans at risk, exercise and healthy eating can help reverse prediabetes. Start by taking a simple one-minute risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. <laughs> Betty can't say that in reverse. Welcome back to The Dog Show. Up next, we have Satchmo. Satchmo is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their couch snuggling, ball chasing, face licking, and of course, companionship. Now, let's see him in action. Look how he makes eye contact with his person. That's actually known as the treat stare. How intuitive, and now he appears to be excitedly turning in circles. Ah, the happy dance will come in with this group. But really, the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Satchmo is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. You're listening to Division I Big East coverage, live on Radio DePaul Sports, the student voice of your DePaul Blue Demons. Back 
Exio here alongside Fisher Kelly. We got ourselves a barn burner here in the Wind Trust Arena. The Blue Demons lead 59-58. Feel like it's coming in this game around this time. DePaul might have been up 10, maybe 20. Right now, it seems like St. John's has more of the momentum. Yeah, and I would say St. John's, they're for the most part on track with what they wanted this game to be. Yeah. They knew that it was going to be high scoring on both ends, and they had to make shots, and they've yep. made shots so far in this game. They played very well, but DePaul, they're the better team on paper, and they got to prove that. They got to go back inside to, to Morris. They got to get offensive rebounds, get to the line, cause turnovers, all that stuff yeah. that makes them win. Our next broadcast here on Radio DePaul Sports will be tomorrow night at 5.30 as the boys team returns to the Wind Trust Arena and face off against the 20th ranked UConn Huskies. Brandon Bowens and myself will be on a call and lovely Olivia will be engineering the game. <laughs> so here's Morrow's two free throws. And Morrow misses that free throw. And yes, Olivia and I do do things other than Radio DePaul Sports. We have been <laughs> doing <laughs> we did Wednesday's game we're doing tonight's game and we're doing tomorrow night's game and that one's good so Morrow goes one of two from the line and it's now a two-point lead for the Blue Demons Morrow 16 points and 12 rebounds Bailey baseline almost loses it Clegg with the eyebrow fake goes to Bailey in the corner another eyebrow fake drives inside the floater is good and that's just beautiful ball movement fish by especially Bailey with yep. those fakes. Great ball fakes, great ball movement. Paul just got to stay a little more disciplined, stay home, and hopefully get it back next time. Tie game. Yes. The three-pointer right there. Tied at 60. Collier from the corner hits a three. Now it's 63-60. St. John's, oh, they're, they're very hot from the field in this third quarter. They've made three of their last three, and they are 9-12. That's Bailey for three on the wing. She knocks it down. Kadaja Bailey, the six-foot senior, is having herself one good game. 12 points, two and three from the three-point line. Both teams hitting shots now. This yeah. might be a this might be a back and forth shoot. I mean, not, not like it already has been, but <laughs> this might be it might, it towards 100. Who can, it's really who misses game. shots at the end. I feel like as Church was able to drive in and bank off the glass a two. Blue Demons lead 65-63. That's swat away by Held. Correa's jumper denied. Morris brings the ball up. Morris goes between the legs, goes up top to Church. Church thought about the three, crosses over to his right, goes inside to Morrow. Morrow to her right, underhand, no good. Morris with the offensive rebound. Morris drives in, the floater is up. The floater is good for number 11. That's the 16th point for the senior. Bailey with the ball on the wing. Goes inside to Patterson. Patterson's mid-range is good. Man, St. John's, they really do convert on the offensive side. Score with the best of them, as we've seen. Yeah. Patterson now with 16. She's seeing an efficient 7 of 8 from the field as Held drives in off the glass, 4-2. And Lexi Held has herself... 14 points, had herself a very hot first half with 12 points as it's 69-65 as Correa drives in. Clegg with the ball up top, hands it off to Patterson who goes to Correa on the wing. Correa behind the back, that one is stolen by Morrow. Collier retains it, Held brings the ball up, goes to Church inside for two, that's blocked by Bailey. Bailey pushes the ball up the court. Correa in the corner, but Bailey keeps it inside. Patterson off the glass, and good for two. Back to a two-point game. I, I hate to say it, but if you're a fan of defense, you should probably turn off this game. Right turn now. off this game. You should turn this game off <laughs> if you do, half If time. you do not like offense, this is not your game. If you like offense, you better stay tuned. As Collier's three is in and out. Moro. Off the hands of Hurd, it's going to be St. John's basketball. Unique Drake will come in for, uh, it looks like, Patterson. And looks Darion. Like Cosgrove's coming in, Yeah, too. Cosgrove. Good call, Fish. Cosgrove comes in as well. And that's a matchup well, to look for with Morrow. people on the court now for St. John's. Yep, Patterson's out, and Pepples should be out. Yeah, so Cosgrove comes in along with Drake. 
and um, Rogers comes in for the fall. Oh, we got that. We got it. We got situated. Here we go. <laughs> and there's more size out there for St. Yeah. John's right now with Cosgrove. Yeah. So and Morrow, that's the matchup I'm looking for right there. She can do what she wants right on there. offense, but right there, oh, Cosgrove got lucky a little bit. And Joe, <laughs> Joe Tardamellis just slammed his feet on the ground as that passes off of Morrow's hand. That's a DePaul turnover. Cosgrove. And an easy chance to convert that too, just too much on it. So, uh, but ironically, St. John's down by two. They can hold for the last shot here. Going through that fourth quarter with the lead tied. Or the worst is you're down by two. So nevertheless, St. John's has put themselves in a good position to end the third period. They played great in the second half. Really outplayed DePaul in this third quarter. As you can see, Bailey's holding the ball. Seven seconds left. Bailey drives in. Inside on Morrow, and she is fouled. And Bailey goes to the line for two free throws. That's Moro's second foul of the game. That's going to be a team second foul as well. Chance here to tie the game. DePaul still with a chance to put up a heave. 4.5 left on the clock here. First free throw is good for Bailey. She's had herself a third quarter to remember seven points on a day or on the quarter shooting 100% from the field eight points now and four assists so nine points and four assists in this third quarter it's really been going through her so 4.5 69-69 Collier goes to Held Held pushes the ball up Held pump fakes it the three it's up it's off so we're going to go to the fourth quarter all tied at 69 stay tuned for what could be a very exciting Fourth period of women's basketball. Rich Please, is just a really, oh, really, really good guy. The term good egg isn't enough to describe him. He's also certified organic and free range. Rich puts the cap back on everything. The toothpaste, the olive oil, the shampoo, everything. He lets his 10-year-old nephew beat him at virtual tennis, even though he can straight up slay his 10-year-old nephew in virtual tennis. When the toilet paper is running low, Rich replaces the roll on the actual holder, not just on the back of the toilet. Rich is texting and driving. Rich, no, what are you doing, Rich? I was just telling everyone how great you are. Texting and driving? makes good people look bad. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Biking in Chicago is more than just a mode of transportation. It's a lifestyle. It's convenient, affordable, and with 13,000 bike racks, parking is never a problem. But with every reward comes a sidecar of risk. In Chicago, over 1,700 cyclists a year are killed or injured in bike accidents involving motor vehicles. Bike safety is simple. First, become familiar with Chicago bike laws. Know your hand signals and when to use them. Love your brain. Get a bike helmet that fits your noggin. And deck it out with a headlamp and some reflective gear for riding at night. Bike at least three to four feet away from parked cars to avoid being struck by a car door being opened. Motorists can do their part, too, by checking their side view mirrors for bike traffic before exiting their vehicle. Most importantly, remember that we're sharing the road. Looking out for both ourselves and each other is the only way to keep Chicago's roads safe, no matter what your wheels look like. For more information on bike safety in Chicago, visit www.chicagobikes.org. This public service announcement was brought to you by Radio DePaul, Chicago's college connection. You're listening to Division I Big East coverage, live on Radio DePaul Sports, the student voice of your DePaul Blue Demons. Sixty-nine, sixty-nine here at the Wind Trust Arena, Jack Dale alongside Fisher Kelly. Fisher, <laughs> we have got ourselves a barn burner here. Ooh. St. John's have kept themselves in this game throughout. They have trailed by 10 in the first period, in the second period, and in the third period, and they sit here entering the fourth period with the basketball tied. They can take the lead here. Yeah, and they're really overperforming their 6-12 and 12 record. Oh, absolutely. 2-6 in the B Big East. I mean, they've looked great here tonight. Looks like their game plan has been executed very well. And yeah. Paul, they've just made some mistakes, you know, 
untimely mistakes, and you know they just haven't tightened up on defense like we've seen in the past. So yep. they've given St. John's life, mm -hmm. and let's see if they can close it out in this fourth quarter. Both teams ranked one and two in offense in the Big East. DePaul one, St. John's two. As Lexi held, able to absorb some contact and hit one off the glass for a two. No foul called, but in Big East rankings, these are the top two offenses in the conference as Clegg drives in. Bailey in the corner, pump fakes it, drives the baseline, drives in off the glass, and good. Deja Bailey, wow, really playing some efficient basketball here tonight. She's, I haven't seen her miss a shot yeah. in the second half. Six and nine, any. and she also has five assists. She had a nine points and four assists in just the third period, let alone as Morrow is fouled down low for two free throws. I mean, Correa's out there, Bailey's out there, Drake's obviously performing um, well as well, or well as well. <laughs> and you have Patterson, who's on the bench, who has the team high in 18. So this has just been an all-around effort by the Johnnies. So Morrow's first free throw is up and off. It's been kind of a night for her to forget from the free throw line. Three of seven, although she has now um, the league leading Division One double doubles, but the free throw line has not been too kind to her today as her second free throw is up and good. She converts that one four of eight on a day so far. 72-71, nine minutes left here. Bailey, Morrow on Bailey. Correa for three. Correa's three's off. Morrow with the rebound, tipped from behind on Bailey, and I'll be out of bounds on the Johnnies and Blue Demon basketball. Held will bring the ball up. Goes to Morris. Morris, mid-range two is up. Mid-range two is good. And the Blue Demons now lead by three. Clegg goes to Bailey. Bailey goes back to Clegg. Clegg goes to Drake. Drake drives in outside to Bailey. Bailey with the pump fake jab step crosses over. Inside for two off the glass. She misses that. Morris with the rebound. Held with a wide open lane to the basket. And good. And Joe Tartamella will call a timeout as the Blue Demons now lead 76 71. We'll be right back. Stay tuned, everybody. Adults of unique determination and experience, an ideal fit for your company in an entry level position, internship, or mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Sometimes the best candidates aren't the ones you're used to. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. Welcome back to The Dog Show. Up next, we have Satchmo. Satchmo is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their couch snuggling, ball chasing, face licking, and of course, companionship. Now, let's see him in action. Look how he makes eye contact with his person. That's actually known as the treat stare. How intuitive, and now he appears to be excitedly turning in circles. Ah, the happy dance will come in with this group. But really, the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Satchmo is to meet one. Visit theshelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. I don't recycle. I mean, we can just find another planet for your kids to live on, you know? Noted non-recycler Tommy Crenshaw talks about the future. Oh, I can totally see finding another planet that can support life when ours fills up with trash. Log on to yougottobekidding.org and learn about all the ways you can recycle, unless you're into lame excuses like Tommy's. Hey, recycling's just not my thing. Starting over on a new planet? Now that's exciting. Don't be that guy, unless you want people looking at you funny. Log on to yougottobekidding.org. Dad, this is fun. I didn't think I liked kayaking. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. But I think it's time to head back in. Okay. Can we come back? Sure. Hey, be careful getting out of the boat. It's a kayak, Dad. <laughs> I'm going to return the kayak. Can we walk home? How about a taxi? It's a short fare from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. You're listening to Division I Big East coverage, live on Radio DePaul Sports, the student voice of your DePaul Blue Demons. Jack Theo, Fisher Kelly here, 76-71.
Good job by the Blue Demons, you should say, coming out of that fourth period. They've had chances to really put this game to rest, but starting off the fourth period on a 7-2 run. Yeah, and they just had a great defensive possession right before yep. that timeout by St. John's, stopping Kadeja Bailey from getting a bucket and then leading to a fast break opportunity for DePaul that they cashed in on at the other end. Need more possessions like that. Not yep. necessarily turnovers, but good, solid defense. Cause them to force up a bad shot. Maybe get a shot clock violation. That's the type of possession they need. Yeah, absolutely. We only got some time, of course. We want to send our thank yous to Olivia back in the studio engineering today's game. She's also the live game coordinator. Makes our schedules, makes everything go smoothly. You wouldn't be able to hear us without Olivia. She's basically the nucleus of our radio broadcast. So we appreciate Olivia for stepping in and stepping up, of course. That's all she does. And Olivia will be back at it tomorrow. And so <laughs> Olivia and I just can't get enough of basketball. So Correa goes up top to Patterson. Patterson to Pepples, a steal by Morrow. Morrow goes to Church. Church drives up the court inside and foul, but she misses the basket. She'll go to the line for two free throws. Very interesting story. So my first conversation, one of my first conversations with Olivia was she was teaching me the engineer board. And so I was wearing sweatpants and a sweatshirt because, like, you know, and Olivia comes in like a full, full, like a full blown like jumpsuit and everything, and I was just so shocked as Church makes the first one. I felt so underdressed for my engineer performance because I didn't know if I was supposed to dress up or not. It was just a lesson. And Olivia came in with like heels. She came in with like a nice sports jacket and everything. And I was like, okay. And I was, and that was like the first interactions I've had with Olivia. It's always been funny with her. Always good times with her. She makes fun of me. And she makes me feel sad sometimes. I'm just kidding. Olivia has always been a, you know. <laughs> Olivia has always been a huge part to me this year in broadcasting. She's been a fun person to hang around with in the radio station. As Drake goes to Patterson up top for two. And Patterson's shot is off the back iron. So Morris brings the ball up. Held for three. That one's off. Pat or Bailey with the rebound. Bailey drives up the court. Inside, off the glass, 4-2, and good. And there is Kadeja Bailey, 18 points now on the game. She's such a good scorer. You can just tell coming down the court. She's got moves for days, and she's really been exploiting DePaul's uh, lackluster defense could, in the second you half. You could say moves like Jagger, maybe. <laughs> As there's an offensive foul, looks like maybe a moving screen by Anisha Morrow. Fish, do you have any interactions or fun reactions with Olivia? I have not yet. Oh, wow. Well, I'm sort of a newbie <laughs> when it comes to, you know, Radio DePaul Sports, but um, come she's on. been come on, Olivia. very transparent, <laughs> transparent about expectations, which I appreciate. Yeah, she has a very nice side, and she has a very stern side. <laughs> So Drake with the ball goes to Correa. Correa drives in. The mid-range two is up. The mid-range two is off. Morrow with the rebound. That's her 14th of the game. Morris with the ball up top. Uses the screen of Morrow. The pick and roll game to perfection. Morrow lays it off the glass in for two. That's just two-man basketball right there. And the Blue Demons extend their lead to seven. Bailey with the ball up top. Drake for three. She hits the three. Unique Drake keeps this one alive. 14 points on the day for her. Church drives inside. Avoid stepping out of bounds. Morris goes to Rogers to held in the wing. Held for three. That one's no good. Pepples with the rebound. She will kick it to Correa, who brings it up the court. Bailey with the ball, goes off the screen of Pepples, drives inside between her legs. The floater is up and off. A foul by Morris holds her hands up and says, I did nothing. The officials have decided she did do something. So 80-76, Bailey will go to the line for two free throws. Already two for two on the day. Church will come out. Collier comes in for her. I'll tell you, Jack, even though Correa may on paper be their best player, they need to stop Kadeja Bailey in this fourth quarter. She is getting whatever she wants as she makes the first free throw. But really propelling the St. John's offensive attack 
in this second half, keeping them in this game despite DePaul's back-to-back -back runs. Yep, good call right there. So it's 80-78 as Bailey converts both free throws. Team high, 20 points. Morris with the ball up top. Pump fakes it, drives inside. The mid-range two is good. That just seems to be Sonia Morris's layup, basically, is a mid-range two around the free throw line. And she's got that jump shot going in the fourth quarter. Need to maintain that. Patterson with the ball around the free throw line. Hands it off to Drake. Drake drives inside. That one is off. Patterson with the rebound. Underhand off the glass too much. Morrow with the rebound. Held pushes the ball up over the hands to Collier. Collier drives in, and she is fouled. Looks like that's unique Drake who will get tagged with the body. So 82, 78, 513 left in this fourth period. Foul on the floor, the third team foul by the Red Storm. Clerg will come in for Drake. So Moore is shooting an efficient 10 of 14 from the field. Her and Moore are combined for 40 of the 82 points. As Morris's mid-range is up and off, and that's off the hands of Pebbles, and there'll be the Paul basketball uh, below the basket. Who? And on this possession, I look for DePaul to get to the free throw line more. They can have success yeah. there, especially with how aggressive their stars are, Morris and Morrow. Um, obviously, Morrow not had a good line, not a good night at the line, but you know to really ice this game. Mm -hmm. Might want to get there as Sonia Morris travels. Yeah, I mean, they had Kyria, Kyria Collier running a Steph Curry type of play, wide open from a bunch of screens. They just couldn't find her. And now DePaul, or say St. John's, a chance here to make this a one-possession game. Uh, Morris will be taken out for a brief second. Church comes in for her. Claire brings the ball up. She has 10 points on the day. Claire goes inside. The Pebbles able to get it off the glass and in for two. That's Pebbles' eighth point of the day, and it's back to a two-point game, 82-80. St. John's, as I said before, getting to those 50-50 balls. Paul had a chance to steal that, but just could not convert. Yeah. Morris kicked it out to a wide-open Roger. She missed it. Morrow with the offensive rebound. She misses her own layup. Pebbles with the rebound, holds it tight, gives it to Clerk to bring up the court. Clerk off the screen of Pebbles, hands it off to Bailey. Bailey thought about the three. She's asking for a screen. Who's going to set it? No one. She says, I will do it myself. Pebbles does set the screen. Bailey drives in off the glass and in for two. We're back at a tie game, 82 all, 4-0-3 and counting left. Just unstoppable in this second half. Kadeja Bailey keeping oh. the Johns in this game. Church drives in inside and that's in for two maybe a travel but kept the pivot pivot foot stuck and now it's 84 82 the paw so cleric now brings the ball up goes to correa correa is the team's point leader with 20. correa kicks out the clerk clerk in a corner for three that one's off the front iron morrow with the rebound she falls and that's a travel could say that she ran into her teammates and Rogers and held, and that's the reason she fell, but couldn't keep her stance, and that's going to be a turnover. Sonia Morris will come in for Darion Rogers. So I feel like this is going to be the five we see down the stretch for both teams. Yeah. Uh, for St. John's, they have all four, five starters in besides one. As Patterson drives in, off the contact, and one ties the game and has a chance to take the lead with a free throw. Danielle Patterson, the grad student out of Brooklyn, New York, the Mary Lewis Academy. Oh, those Academy players, Fish, they're built for this moment. Private schools, man. <laughs> well, we go to a private school, Fish. We do, yeah. <laughs> so a chance to give the St. John Red Storm their first lead since the second period. She misses. Morris with the rebound, 84 all. Almost a charge right there. Held brings the ball up. Held for three. Held hits the three. Ice in the veins from the senior. The Blue Demons lead 87-84. Held now with 21 points. The Blue Demons now with three players with 20-plus points. 
big time shot from the senior right there for DePaul, pushing the lead back up to three as we reach the three minute mark of this fourth quarter. Clegg drives in, pump fakes it, nowhere to go, goes across, stolen by Morris. Morris tries to slow things down. She picks up the pace, drives inside. She swatted from behind by Patterson. That's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow favors the Blue Demons. And now we're going to see Unique Drake go to the scorer's table and check in. That appears to be for Clegg. I feel like a basket here would be huge for DePaul. Trying to extend that lead up by three. You can see they're really keying on Lexi Held right now as Bailey's on her. Lexi Held goes to her right, tries to pump fake it, can't do it. Morris up top, inside to Morrow. Peoples on Morrow. Morrow and the contact and the shot. Anisha Morrow is a freshman, but she plays like an All-American senior. That's their bread and butter right there for the Blue Demons. She is their money maker. 22 points and 18 rebounds. Whew. Morrow, four of eight from the line today. She misses. And this is where St. John's, they come back in that four to five point, six point range. They start to hit a couple shots and it's now a tie game. We'll see if that's the case here as Bailey drives in. Off the glass, she misses, gets her own rebound. Off the glass, that one's no good. Morrow with the rebound, she loses it. Correa goes to uh, Bailey inside for two, and she hits it. A lot of commotion going on down low. But St. John cuts it to a one-possession game, nearing the two-minute mark. DePaul losing those 50-50 balls again. Got to come up with those tough possessions, especially in the fourth. Morris with the ball up top. A three could be something here. Morris nowhere to go. Goes up top to Held. Held, she could hit a three right here. Drives inside. That one is short. Bailey with the rebound. A three ties a game. Bailey brings the ball up. As the dance team and cheerleaders are cheering behind us. Bailey nowhere to go. She has to find somewhere. Loses the ball, gets it back. Goes up top to Patterson. Patterson drives inside on Morris. She's blocked, gets her own block, but she steps out of bounds. It will be DePaul basketball. Great defense from Morris right there. Quick hands causing that turnover. And now DePaul playing with the lead. Minute 30 to go. Can they hold on to this yeah. and lock up? We've seen St. John's answer all of DePaul's runs. Let's see what happens here in this fourth. As Morris cuts in and makes the two. A five-point game, a minute 18 left. You have to figure an empty possession by St. John's here. DePaul scores on the other end. That could do it right here. So a big possession for the Johnnies. Bailey with the ball up top. Off the screen of Correa. Goes to Patterson. Patterson trying to go to Correa, but nothing going there. Patterson with the ball. 12 seconds left on the shot clock. Has nowhere to go. Hands it off. Keeps it. Goes to Drake with six seconds left. Five seconds left. Goes inside. The underhand off the glass. Are you kidding me? Unique Drake with unique underhand roll for two, <laughs> and it's a three-point game. Wow, what a Tough play. shot. So three-point game, a three could ice it, and Doug Bruno is going to, I believe, call a timeout here. So we're gonna keep things here, 91-88. Back and forth matchup. Obviously, we've got a lot of offenses, what we expected. You could bet the over, you should've. <laughs> yep. But St. John's, they need one stop. They just need that one stop, and then they have a chance to tie the game, but that's the problem, Fish. The, the one stop hasn't been there yet. None of these teams have been able to get timely stops, and really this is the time that we see, you know, teams' abilities to win games and lose games. They all come yep. in this last minute. And DePaul, you know, they don't like the spot they're in. They wish they were up more, yeah. but they have a chance to save face here. And for St. John's, you just play, play like heck. In all honesty, DePaul is what in, was in the same position. St. John's was in against UConn on Wednesday. That's right. So a little flip the script moment here. Uh, DePaul just could never get that stop, and UConn scored with two seconds left, ultimately won the game. Now for St. John's, you have 18 seconds left on the shot clock to defend. Just got to find something and got a rebound, obviously, for sure. They still have two timeouts, so plenty of time to draw up any plays they want to. A two, it doesn't say it's over, but a three as they foul. 
Uh, Joe Tonamello was on his knees there. Uh, I don't know if he wanted them to foul. Maybe not that quickly. One more well, time now clock, I clock think maybe. Uh, he, what he wanted to do, uh, actually, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what he wanted to do because that just put him in the bonus, and now Lexi Hell is shooting one of one. Uh, yeah. yeah okay. Obviously some miscommunication there between I, I feel like Red Storm and players. I, I feel like it would have made sense if there was one more foul to give, but there wasn't. And Hell misses the first free throw. Okay, maybe I'm not a maybe I'm that's why I'm not a coach. So, <laughs> but I uh, don't see how this pays off. So Lexi Held misses the first one. Second one's up. It's good. So a four-point game, and Tarnamella will call a timeout. We're gonna stay right here once again. Uh, 92-88. What's is it? Is a three necessary, or do you have to have a three this possession, or can a two still be okay? Uh, I don't think you need a three. I think okay. for the Red Storm, if they just push the ball and get it to Bailey, get her going downhill, maybe draw a foul, get a layup, then you can get the ball with maybe 25 seconds left on the clock, something like that. You can get another foul, another stop. But you don't need a three here. And 30, yeah, 34 seconds. I think with this much time, you look for the best shot. Yes, with 34 exactly. seconds, you still. I mean, if it was 10 seconds, obviously you go for a three. But you want to go to the hoop because yeah. even if you don't get that shot at the hoop, just kick it out to an open shooter, then you get that three-pointer you're looking for. What to suspect is if St. John's were to make a shot, they're going to apply that press right away. So Absolutely. DePaul does have one timeout. Both teams do have one timeout remaining. DePaul is in the bonus as well. So as the final countdown plays here at the Wind Trust Arena, very great song, by the way. Um, see what happens here. Oh, man, Clegg now in the game. It's Clegg, Drake, Bailey, Pepples, and Correa. No Patterson who is second on the team in scoring today. It looks like they're trying to go for three here. Correa had a chance to go inside. She doesn't. Goes to Bailey outside. 27 seconds left. Lexi Held on her. Lexi Held. She steals it. Lexi Held takes it out of the cookie jar. And she is fouled from behind by Bailey. The cookie monster comes out here late in the fourth period. Wow. And that could be a game ceiling steal for the all Big East honor. Senior, number 10, Lexi Hell. She's been spectacular tonight. Along with Anissa Morrow, she's been my MVP of the game. Eight assists, 22 points, coming up with a timely steal, too. Has a chance to steal this at the line. Held's first free throw is up and good. The big three, Held, Morris, and Morrow are a combined 67 points tonight so far. Held second free throw is good. So 94-88, a three definitely necessary here now. Yes. So Clegg in the corner. She goes baseline, nowhere to go. And that's an offensive that foul. And that could be the dagger. Usually it's a shot, but this one's going to be a shot in the heart because it's an offensive foul. And now St. John's is going to have to foul. So Morris with the ball, and St. John's is backing off, and backing looks off. like Joe Tartamella is telling his team, we fought hard, but ultimately we're not going to win this one, and that is going to be it. With three seconds in, counting left on the clock, the Blue Demons enter the win column once again, avenge their loss against UConn on Wednesday, 94-88 behind a team high of Lexi Helds, 24 points, 3 of 7 from the line, and obviously the game ceiling steal. But well, this is a win for DePaul. You really feel good about, but also there's a lot to work from. Yeah, and, you know, for DePaul, this wasn't the prettiest game. And, you know, the saying goes that sometimes it's better to win ugly than to lose pretty, you know. And this is one of those games where they didn't play well, but, you know, they still got the win and they could still learn from it. And for the Red Storm, I mean, that's just a crushing loss. As yep. a team looking up at a lot of their competition in the Big East at the bottom, they needed this big road win and just – Came up short in the last couple seconds. Yeah, we'll be back on air and live tomorrow night at 5.30 as the men's team will face off against the Connecticut Huskies. It'll be Brandon Bowens, myself, and Olivia on engineering. But for tonight, for Fish, myself, and Olivia, we want to thank you all for tuning in. Have a great night, and be safe, everybody.